Good evening. We, we call to order this uh, regularly scheduled meeting of the Bristol Virginia City Council today, Tuesday, September 27th, 2022. Please join us for a moment of silence. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, thank you all for joining us this evening. We've got a, a pretty uh, packed agenda this evening, so we'll go ahead and, and jump right into uh, uh, comments from the city council. I would like to take a minute to uh, uh, congratulate the school board on the fact that uh, they recently announced that all uh, of the schools in the city for the first time, I think, I don't know if it's the first time ever, but definitely the first time in a long time, had received accreditation this year. So that uh, is a great accomplishment, especially coming out of the pandemic and, and where students are dealing with learning loss and other issues. So for them to uh, still be able to achieve that, I think is uh, uh, worth uh, recommendation or commendation. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I just would like to thank the Industrial Development Authority um, for their vote to approve the, uh, the new hotel uh, that's going in at, uh, at the falls. Uh, we always love to see new economic development, and uh, we're going to have a shortage of hotel rooms very soon, so we, uh, we like to see that, so I appreciate their, uh, their vote in support of that. Definitely. Um, if there's no other comments here, uh, we'll move to city manager comments. I just know for the record, Ms. Nave is on uh, the telephone tonight. She is out of town on business, but she is participating by phone. Okay. Sounds good. And uh, next, we'll move on to uh, matters to be presented by members of the public for uh, non-agenda items. And this is items not currently on the agenda. And we had uh, the first person to sign up is Mr. Michael Pollard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Um, I was wondering concerning the uh, current uh, service requirements at the landfill um, if you can tell me how many vendors the city has reached out to to quote the current needs uh, particularly the uh, the need to be able to take our trash to someplace for uh, being uh, stored there uh, I know that they have it's been posted at least on the city website and maybe some other sites I was wondering how many vendors the city has reached out to and uh, what websites other than government websites it may have been posted on. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, next item is our the adoption of our agenda. What's the pleasure of the council? Uh, I move for the adoption of the agenda as presented. Second. Okay. A motion and a second. Clerk, please call the roll. Yes. Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? Yes. Farnham? Yes. Okay. The first item of our agenda is uh, E1, an ordinance to create a zoning map amendment for property located on Amy Street, map parcel 13-1-5. Nobody signed up for public comment for this item, so staff report. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. The city has received a zoning map amendment request from SOPEN2 LLC, who is represented by Ms. Teresa Tybal. The property is located at the end of Amy Street, which is parcel 13-1-5 and is currently vacant. The petitioner proposes amending the City of Bristol zoning map to change this map parcel from R2, single and two family residential, to R3, moderate density residential. And I'll put up the current zoning of the property here. 
The Planning Commission recommended this request for a joint public hearing at its August 15th, 2022 meeting. <clears throat> the request was advertised in the Bristol Herald Courier on August 30th and September 6th, 2022. A sign was placed on the property on August 30th, 2022. Adjoining property owner notices were mailed out on September 6th, 2022. The joint public hearing between the Planning Commission and the City Council was September 13th, 2022. And the Planning Commission recommended this re request for approval at its September 19th, 2022 meeting by a vote of seven to zero. Uh, the existing land use is undeveloped and vacant. As mentioned, the existing zoning designation is R2, single and two family residential. The future land use map designation is single family residential. It is a 5.689 acre site with uh, basically trees and brush. <coughs> Vehicular access to the property would be via Amy Street. Amy Street is a dead end street with a cul-de-sac there are currently 35 townhouse units and three single family homes that use Amy Street for access. The existing uses bordering the subject property are residential. There's a mixture of single family units and townhouse units in the area. There's also a 29 unit apartment complex under construction on Bristol View Drive to the north. The following sections of this report will provide staff analysis for these issues. Um, compatibility with neighboring land uses and effects on community character. The subject property is bordered by a mix of single and multifamily uses. The characteristics for the R3 zone are to provide for the development of moderate density residential uses and structures in moderately spacious surroundings. This district is to be located in the intermediate portions of the city or a protective environment suitable for moderate density residential uses can be provided and in established moderate density residential areas to ensure their continuance. This district is also appropriate on a smaller scale in the suburban portions of the city as a transitional or buffer zone between low density residential districts and commercial districts, industrial districts or major transportation arteries and other uses that are not compatibility, compatible with a low density residential environment. This district allows for single family attached dwellings or townhouses through the townhouse development standards or multifamily connected horizontally with compacted front, rear and side yards and typically having their own entry from the street or sidewalk. Consistency with the 2017 city comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan does not specifically address this area of the city. However, objective five of the residential area framework plan states that the city should encourage and support the development of diversity of new housing product at a variety of price points and sizes. The future land use map updated and revised in 2019 shows the subject property as single family attached. This is defined as townhouses, row houses or duplexes in which units may be connected horizontally. As earlier stated, there are townhouses on Amy Street and new apartment units under construction on Bristol View, so there are a variety of residential land uses in this area. As far as the impacts go for traffic, the proposed use will increase the level of traffic on Amy Street. It's difficult to estimate the amount of traffic without an accurate projection of housing units. However, on average, apartment uses generally generate approximately eight trips per day with half entering and half exiting. Once a more detailed site plan is submitted to the city, showing the exact number of units to be constructed, a traffic study could be required by the engineering department if there are concerns about negative impacts on the roadway. Natural resources, there should be no adverse impacts on natural resources if the proposed zoning map amendment is approved. City staff will require all environmental related permitting to be obtained and approved prior to development, including soil and erosion control and stormwater management. Connection to public water and sewer will be required by Bristol Virginia Utilities at the developer's expense. Uh, school system, the proposed map amendment could have a minimal impact on the local school system, depending on the number of units constructed and the number of children who live in those units. Uh, the pr 
proposed map amendment will not impact the local parks and recreation facilities and services. As far as emergency services go, Fire Marshal Eric Blevins commented that a hydrant is presently located near the cul-de-sac on Amy Street, so hydrant access is presently available. Fire flows for the location show a flow rate acceptable for residential use. Shifting the location from R2 to R3 would be acceptable. Uh, we did not ha hear any comments from Bristol Virginia Utilities. However, as mentioned earlier, they would be required to provide water and sewer or hook up to public water and sewer. Should be no impact on current transit service since it does not operate in this area. The MAP amendment will have a negligible impact on the provision of other government services. Uh, our Public Works Director, Jacob Chandler, made the following comment that if the development were an ap apartment complex, private trash service would be required since the city cannot pick up dumpsters. And other comments uh, from our economic development specialist, Mac Chapman, uh, connecting property is already zoned R3. So as long as there are no utility issues or major impacts to the roadway, I do not see an issue with the rezoning. Staff therefore recommends approval of the zoning amendment request on first ordinance reading. And I have, you do have an updated version of the ordinance. Uh, the exhibit on the original one was incorrect, so the one you have in front of you that was left here is now correct. Okay. Thank you. What's the pleasure of the council? Uh, I move for first reading of the ordinance by caption only. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the first reading of this ordinance by caption only. Is there any council discussion? Uh, I do have a couple uh, questions, and, and you kind of you kind of hit hit on them a little bit, but I just want to be clear. So, is is there there's not an exact number of units that have been told to us yet, but is there is there an estimate on the number of units? I believe the number was around 80 that I've been told. So, would these be more apartments or, or townhouses? Or? They would be apartments. Yes. Uh, as much as anything, the reason for the R3, you can go up to a density of about an average of 20 to 21 units per acre. The R2 is 12 units per acre. So there is a little bit of a difference. Plus the way you can cluster the buildings makes it, gives you the ability to create you know, more units with more green space and kind of cluster them as opposed to having to subdivide them and them all be attached. Okay, and I have one other question. I know you said that there may be a traffic study done to determine the effects on, mm -hmm. on Amy Street itself. Um, would that traffic study also include Wagner Road? Because I feel like that's where the majority of the traffic, and especially with that the small bridge there, you know, and it would it would pretty much have to, since all traffic that comes out on Amy Street would enter yeah. or would exit onto Wagner Street. Yes. Yeah. Would it, I mean, I don't know what the results of the traffic study would be, but it could be that we might need to widen Wagner Road a little bit. Um, well, the you know, the, like I said, the engineering would determine that, and then we would, that traffic study would present options that could be performed, yes. Thank you. So, <clears throat> I had similar questions to Mr. Osborne, so you've already answered those. The only other thing I, is uh, there's property along Boone and Page Street with residential houses there. What would be the setback for this that, you know, to give some kind of buffer? Well, there, you would just typically use the setbacks for the zoning district. Yeah. That's so I'll get those for you just so I can remember. But there would not be an additional setback required if, okay. if that's I what you, there, There's not like a, a buffer would, zone required okay. between an R3 and an R2. And uh, I just want to make sure there was sufficient right. setback. Between, since, you know, when you look at that, you can see the houses there, especially on Boone mm -hmm. Street, they look a little closer. I, I don't know how close to the edge right. of the property they're developed, but. The southern, the southern portion of the property that is closer to Boone Street and Page Street does have, it's a little more difficult from a topographical standpoint. Okay. So I believe, you know, that they will be responsible for laying out the site, but it yeah. is, it does kind of go up as far as you, okay. you're concerned as far as that. So just to clarify, so we did the public hearing and the planning commission also voted to recommend for approval. Correct. Um, okay. And it's surrounding by residential area now and this is staying residential, just R2 to R3. So Correct. Just my personal thoughts, I don't, don't see any issues myself with it. So, but if, uh, we, we definitely need housing in our city. Yep. 
If there's, uh, if there's no further council discussion, we do have a motion and a second uh, for the reading by caption only. So, clerk, please call the roll. Hardly? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? Yes. Farnham? Yes. Uh, reading of the ordinance by caption only. Ordinance number 22-16, an ordinance by the City Council of Bristol, Virginia, approving the request by the City of Bristol, or by City of Bristol, Virginia, to amend the city zoning map from single and two-family residential R2 to moderate density residential R3 for property described as map parcel 13-1-5. Thank you. The next item of our agenda is F1, an ordinance to approve the sale of 222 Oak Street in Bristol, Virginia. And we did have one person that signed up for public comment for this item, and that's Miss Fracarossi. Did I do that well? Okay. Um, I'll be brief. I just wanted to uh, reinforce my opinion on your choice for picking Mr. Shu uh, and the old school. I've been in uh, on Solar Street for 17 years now, and I've seen this property go down to pieces, which is a shame. Uh, in the past four years, Mr. Shu moved to Solar Hill, and amazing things have been happening with him, and I've witnessed this on my own. So I think that the choice of picking him to do something with that building is probably the best choice that you could have. Uh, he's a young, he's young, and it's pretty amazing to see younger people to be so interested in the history and the preserving of the history. Uh, it's a, being from Europe, I'm all about history. My history goes way farther. Uh, he's, he's very qualified. And to me, he's the future. He's the future of our children. He's the future of keeping up with the history of this city. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's the only person that signed up for public comment, so staff report. Our council before you tonight is a second reading of an ordinance to approve the sale of 222 Oak Street, uh, which used to be the former school board building. It was also known as Robert E. Lee School at one point. Um, a notice that the city would accept offers uh, for this building was posted in the Bristol Herald Courier on August the 20th of 2022 and August 27th of 2022. All offers were due to my office by September 13th, 2022 at 3 p.m. Any other offer that was received after that date would not be considered. And as of today, we have not received any other offers on that property. So this is the second reading uh, of this ordinance or for this ordinance, a public hearing on this offer took place on September 13th, 2022. The public hearing was properly noticed uh, pursuant to the Code of Virginia. And uh, in the August 20th and 27th edition of the Bristol Herald Courier, and the first reading of this ordinance occurred at the regularly scheduled city council meeting on September 13th of 2022. Okay. I would also note that there was a, another offer that was withdrawn. I can't remember the date he withdrew his offer, but there was another offer that was withdrawn. Okay. All right, thank you. What's the pleasure of the council? Uh, I move for second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any council discussion? Hey, Anthony, can you hear me? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Nave, can you hear us okay? Um, I just wanted to say um, I have received a number of emails and phone calls regarding the, this property, and um, they have all been thanking me for voting yes in favor of the ordinance to approve the sale of the property. And um, I, I mean, it's really been overwhelming how many people are excited to see what the Jews are going to do and, and to restore this property back to its you know, and preserve the historic um, look of this property. So I just wanted to say that I, I feel really good about the decision uh, we made in um, passing the first reading. So um, I was glad to hear that from many of the citizens around there. Okay, thank you, Ms. Nave. If there's, if there's no further discussion, 
We do have a motion and a second for the second reading by caption only. So clerk, please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? No. Farnham? Yes. A reading of the ordinance by caption only. An ordinance approving and authorizing the sale of property owned by the city of Bristol, Virginia, located at 222 Oak Street. Okay. So now we're looking for a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. Uh, I make a motion for adoption of the ordinance as presented. Okay. Second. Okay. A motion and a second for adopting the ordinance. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Harley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? No. Farnham? Yes. Okay. The next item, F2, an ordinance to approve tax-exempt status for Adoration Church of God. Nobody signed up for public comment for this item, so staff report. A council before you is a second reading of the ordinance to approve tax-exempt status for a parcel of property that was purchased by Adoration Church of God. Adoration Church of God is a 501c3 organization pursuant to the Internal Revenue Code. Uh, in 2021, the church purchased the property that adjoins per church property. The purchased property is for church use only, and Adoration Church requests that the property be granted tax-exempt status retroactively effective on the date of its purchase in 2021. As I mentioned at the last meeting, there was a Jan uh, January 6, 2022 case from the Supreme Court of Virginia that basically states that um, while the facts are a little bit different than in this situation, it basically would stand for the proposition that uh, church property is um, that tax exemption goes back to the date of the purchase of the property. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now we're looking for a motion for the second reading of the ordinance. Uh, I move for second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second for second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Is there any council discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, clerk. Please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? Yes. Farnham? Yes. So now we're looking for a motion to adopt the ordinance. I move for adoption of the ordinance as presented. I think I need to read it first real quick. <coughs> You're correct. <laughs> An ordinance to exempt real property owned by Adoration Church of God from real property taxation by classification. Thank you. So now we're looking for a motion to adopt the ordinance. I move for adoption of the ordinance as presented. Second. Okay. All right, a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? Yes. Farnham? Yes. The next item is an ordinance for tax exempt status and approval of forgiveness of property taxes for the Bristol Ballet. Nobody signed up for public comment for this item, so staff report. Uh, council, before you is a uh, ordinance, second reading of the ordinance for uh, the Bristol Ballet for tax exempt status on a piece of property they purchased at 330 Buford Street in Bristol, Virginia. They plan to renovate the building and use it as its new permanent home. The Bristol Ballet requests forgiveness of the delinquent property taxes on the property and tax exempt status. Uh, just for the record, the ordinance before you tonight does not include any forgiveness of prior uh, property taxes that were owed. Okay. All right. Thank you. So we're looking for a motion for the second reading of the ordinance. Uh, I move for second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Second. <coughs> A motion and a second for a second reading of the ordinance. Is there any council discussion? What are the uh, what are the guidelines for a nonprofit uh, to get tax exempt status? Are, are are all nonprofits eligible for this on on their property? If it's a five hundred one c three, right? It's a, and there's probably others, but specifically a five hundred one c three is eligible for tax exempt status. So we discussed last time the. Uh, some delinquent taxes, which was that probably from a previous owner? That would be my assumption that was from a previous owner. Okay. 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 So when they relocated, they were on the Tennessee side previously? Is that correct? No, 
No. No. They were on, they, the they were on State Street in the 500. They were above Blackburn, and then they were on the 500 block of State Street uh, across from the Paramount. Oh, yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking of the theater Bristol. Okay. Um, so, and they didn't have tax exempt status there? I think they rented the property. They, they, oh, did they rent it? They, okay. Yeah. That's correct. So we do have a motion and a second for the second reading of the ordinance. If there's no further council discussion, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? No. Barnum? Yes. Uh, reading of the ordinance by caption only. An ordinance to exempt real property owned by Bristol Concert Ballet Company from real property taxation by classification. Okay, thank you. Uh, now we're looking for a motion to adopt the ordinance. Uh, I move for adoption of the ordinance as presented. Second. A motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? No. Barnum? Yes. The next item is F for an ordinance for approval of tax exempt status for property owned by the Bristol Historical Association Incorporated. Uh, nobody signed up for public comment for this item. Staff reports. Uh, Council, this is a second reading of the ordinance for um, parcel of property that was gifted to the Bristol Historical Society or Historical Association. This parcel adjoins property already owned by the Bristol Historical Association, which is tax exempt as well and the Bristol Historical Association requests that the new property be granted tax exempt status. The public hearing and the first reading of the ordinance both occurred at the regularly scheduled council meeting on September 13th, 2022. Okay. All right, thank you. So we're looking for a motion for the second reading of the ordinance. Uh, I move for second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Okay. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second for the second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Uh, is there any council discussion? I think we asked this question the last time, but we're only dealing with the portion that's in the city, but there's an adjoining parcel, I think, in Washington County. I think so, but I did but not look in the Washington County GIS to see if that was okay. their property or not. I, I would think so, given its location. I think if, if it's the house that we're talking about, yeah. that's in the county, which would be their, which would be their property. And, uh, and we said that there is an adjoint, there's an adjoining lot in the city that's already under tax exempt status. That's correct. Okay. Okay. If there's no further discussion, uh, we do have a motion and a second. So clerk, please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? No. Barnum? Yes. Uh, reading of the ordinance by caption only. An ordinance to exempt real property owned by Bristol Historical Association from real property taxation by classification. So now we're looking for a motion to adopt the ordinance. Move for adoption of the ordinance as presented. Okay. Second. A motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. So clerk, please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Nave? <coughs> yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? No. Barnum? Yes. The next item is an ordinance to amend the budget ordinance for fiscal year 22-23. No one signed up for public comment, so staff report. A council before you is an ordinance to amend the budget ordinance. This is due to the fact that their, um, the personal property taxes have increased significantly due to the fact of used car values have increased over the past year. And other localities across the Commonwealth have reduced the assessment ratio that is used to calculate the personal property tax for vehicles. The first reading of the ordinance occurred last week, uh, and that ordinance contemplated uh, the assessment ratio at 90%. And I know there's been some discussion within council about some other percentages as well, and I have those numbers if council has any questions. Okay, thank you. So what's the pleasure of the council? Uh, I move. <laughs> for um, second reading of the ordinance. 
uh, by caption only. At 90%? That's the way the ordinance is presented, correct? That's the way it's presented right now, yes. Okay. So to, to move us to discussion, I think we should we should do the motion, and then we can retract it if we... So if we s get to the discussion, decide we want to change that percentage, then we would withdraw the motion, enter a substitute? Would that be the... That would be, you could either do that or you could vote this down and uh, move to amend the 90% to some other percentage that the council deems appropriate. So, um, but you could withdraw the motion as well. Well, if we're gonna move to discussion, I'll second it, but. Okay. Yeah, so, so we do have a motion and a second, so, so council, council discussion. <coughs> Well, I would like for this to be withdrawn. I mentioned this last <coughs> meeting that we was voting on a percentage, but we did not know the numbers. <coughs> now the numbers have come to us, and <coughs> it is of my opinion that we take this down to 80% and not impose an increase on our citizens cost of living now <clears throat> is more than some can bear and we do not need to add to their burdens and I'm, I'm going to recommend that we let this die and then we bring it back at 80 percent we have just opened up a casino yeah our woes are always going to be there we've got to deal with the landfill we've got to deal with this issue that issue but financially we are have we are at a good place and we have a good foothold on our finances and I am recommending that this council let this die and we bring it back at 80% and give our people some relief. Do, do you have those, can you share where we can see those numbers or? Um, yeah, I can send that to Gene. So I, I just want to also throw out too while you're pulling that up. I think I think this is important too to to throw in the discussion. Part of it, you know, can be talked about during budget time more. But I think it's good that we can do this to lower this because people would have some sticker shock when they would get those bills um, that's due December 5th. But also I, I believe the real estate tax is a dollar twelve per hundred dollars of assessed value, and the personal property tax is I think two dollars and sixty cents per hundred dollars so I, I think we need to continue having the larger discussion like you said we we have some new growth in the city and yeah we do have needs but I do think it's important to realize that the taxes that citizens have been paying for a long time have been high so I'd love to get us into the, the routine where we can you know, maybe not all at once but consistently little by little begin lowering those tax rates for people in Bristol Okay, Mr. Eats, can you go over this with us and just get everybody up to date on what this is saying? So if it was 100% ratio, the total tax collected uh, from, the, from citizens would be $5.19 million. Uh, at a 95% ratio, it would be uh, $4.99 million. At the P and I guess I should say the PPTRA is uh, taxes that are received from the state, and that's the maximum amount that we'd re we would receive from the state. That does not mean we receive $723,990. The 90% ratio, which is what uh, the ordinance contemplates now, uh, the locality would collect a total of $4.8 million. At 85%, the locality would collect $4.6 million. And at 80%, the locality would collect $4.423 million. Currently, we collect $4.46 million. So, um, Based on conversations with the previous CFO and with the Commissioner of Revenue, Commissioner of Revenue recommends going no less than 85%. Uh, 
um, there could be a potential for d increase in delinquencies due to the increase in the taxes and therefore we would potentially uh, be out of budget be out of the budget um, at the end of the year when when we have all these collected well I would like to say first you know thank you to the commissioner for putting this together um, so we're currently collecting 4.46 million in personal yes. property taxes. That's what we, that's what we have budgeted. Okay. I think that you know this is this is as good as an opportunity as any that, that I think we ought to start having a discussion as the mayor said of of cutting the personal property tax rate especially. Um, you know that's something I think we ought to discuss in this upcoming budget year. Um, and I mean I and I think I've discussed this with the commissioner myself. Um, instead of collecting personal property taxes once a year, I think we ought to look at breaking them up into every six months like we do real estate tax. So it um, kind of eases the burden um, on people as well. Um, I don't think, I don't know that we would want to go to 80, you know, because it's, it would actually cut the amount that we're bringing in if it's 4.46. You know, it wouldn't be a substantial loss, but you know, we, it would take us below what we have budgeted. Um, I mean, 85 would keep us a little bit above what we have budgeted. Um, is there any reason why we wouldn't want to go like 83, which seems like it would be about break even? We just didn't calculate that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's what I'm coming up with. If, if we wanted to do something that is going to be real close to <clears throat> a flat line, with no increase and no loss, it's going to be somewhere around 82.5%. At 85, we'd be picking up $200,000. At 80, we'd be losing roughly 150. So the happy medium is going to be somewhere around 2.5%. So 82.5 should be a good flat line. I would just ask to keep it a round number, whether it's 82 or 83 percent, if that's the way council chooses. That'd be easier for the it's easier. commissioner of revenues office right. to, if it's even. <coughs> And I, I think this brings up another part of the discussion too. I know we talked about the rate and talking about that during budget time, but also I, I have you know gotten calls before where people have said I, I see people who, who live here, and they have a Tennessee license plate, and maybe someone moves across state lines, but they don't actually, you know, go and do the steps to update their registration, and so so we collect zero in tax revenue from those people. So, you know, I don't know whatever we can do. Maybe it's a combination of lowering the rate or. Uh, enforcement of people who do that or or trying to figure out some sort of uh, incentive to get people to register their cars properly as they should so um, that's a whole other discussion I think besides this item but just wanted to throw it out there no I, 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 go ahead. well I just want to caution council I know you all are kind of looking ahead to the next budget season as what we can do as far as tax rates go you know, it's been said in here that the city's in good financial shape. I can assure you, Council, that with the landfill, uh, what we have set aside right now is going to go really quickly. And we have to be really careful on what we're going to do moving forward, or else we will end back, we'll end up in a position where we were in 2012 to 2017, barring on a tax anticipation note in order to meet operational expenses. So while I, I recognize that taxes are a burden on people, we've also got commitments that we're going to have to make to DEQ as it relates to that landfill. And we do not know the total cost of those projects yet. And we're not going to know the total cost of those projects until they're bid out. So um, yeah, I would just urge caution as we move forward when we're talking about tax rates. There are commitments the city has to make, and we have to do the financially responsible thing, even though it may not be the popular thing. <clears throat> Did the uh, Commission of Revenue indicate just, I mean, a lot of this is due to inflation pressures, just what, what the 
specifically, you know, I think headline inflation has been running eight, nine percent, but particularly for used vehicles, because I think that would be a good gauge of how much to reduce it, because that's that's why the number's gone up. That's right. Um, she, the conversations that we've had with her, I think on average, I want to say the number was around 22% is what she was seeing in an increase across the board for, um, and I may be off on a few percentage points there, but 22% for some reason sticking out in my mind of what a car was worth, you know, a couple of years ago as compared to what it is today, even though it's two years old. So just to clarify, some uh, surrounding locality, uh, locality or, or other localities have, have also done something similar to this to try to uh, ease the burden on the rising costs? Yes, it's been this, uh, a lot of commissioner revenues recognized this issue back in the spring and started making adjustments um, sometime this summer and August on the assessment ratios that their localities use. So, and I know Washington County they recently uh, changed their assessment ratio this upcoming year as well. Yeah. Okay. So we do have a motion and a second for the uh, ordinance as presented, but we could always, if we want to change Osler that. Mr. Osler can we withdraw that if Mr. Harley concurs. So if I do withdraw it, do we have, do we have a number in mind that we can all agree on <coughs> because you know then we'd have to make another motion to, am to amend the well I know I'm gonna be outvoted but I would not like to see it go any higher than 85 percent <coughs> I have no problem with 85 okay. I mean I think you know <coughs> this is a case where inflation is um, well, it's hurt people in a lot of different ways, but this is one that, you know, it's not there, especially used vehicles, even the price is, is ridiculous. So, uh, I mean, they're struggling to put gas yeah, in their car. I think I have no problem with 85%. You know, I'll, I'll say before I pull my motion back and change it. So, you know, one thing that we need to be cognizant of is, you know, this is a, this is a one-time thing that happens. And, you know, the sticker shock will be back next year because I don't anticipate these assessments going down significantly. So, you know, that's one way that we could potentially combat this. In addition, you know, like I said, to, to cutting the personal property tax is trying to have a discussion with the commissioner about breaking up the way it's collected and, and doing it twice a year, which a lot of localities in Virginia do. Um, so that might be helpful. I don't know how mm -hmm. that would affect our line item or our budget lines. But It seems to me when I first got on council in like probably the first year, maybe after that in 2015, 2016, that the rates were higher, but it was not a, a full 100% assessment. Mm. And I think the reason we moved to the 100% assessment was make it very easy for people to calculate because you had to have, you know, like what, had to get out your abacus or your calculator to figure out what, you know, 60% or whatever it was, and then multiply it. So, uh, but in this case, Definitely, I, I think, given the break, and, and you know, we we need to take this up as part of the budget. Definitely, coming year, because I don't think it's anything's going to ease up in the next six to twelve months. So let me ask for <coughs> clarification on how to do this correctly. So when I withdraw my motion, uh, which I'm about to do, so when I make an amended motion, how, how will I phrase this to, to do it correctly? I would just move to change the assessment ratio from the 90% that was first presented to whatever you all choose that assessment ratio to be. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, go ahead. Well, I'll just, go ahead. <coughs> and just to clarify that the difference between the 80 and the 90% is not significant enough that we would have to start with a no, another a, first reading. That's right. Okay. Well, I hate to, uh, to make it more complicated, but I was gonna say I'd, I'd be okay if we were around the 82 or 83 number. But I mean, I know we do have lots of expenses, some we don't even know, um, and we do need to be fiscally responsible, but at the same time, I also think people, yeah, 
people are taxed really high now already in the city. So I, um, well, I would love to see that 82 or 83. We need uh, Miss Nate to chime in because we've got two at 85, and 85 is the max that I'll. I'll you don't I'll know like where I'm at. Say. I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> so if you go I've said a whole lot of nothing over here. Three, then make your motion for 82 or 83. You threw out 85. I said that, that's fine with me. I, I don't think we should go definitely any lower than 82, but I, I could. Yeah, because what we budgeted for, if, if we did 80, it would be yeah. essentially it, it would, less than what we budgeted for. It would, 140 yeah. less. it would put us right at what we budgeted for, and uh, I, I, I do share some of Mr. Eats' caution if you, you, you get too far ahead of yourself, it, it, but I think in this case, it, it should be budget neutral and it gives people uh, a break, but it's something that we're gonna have to have a lot more discussion about going forward of, of how to do this in a way that's uh, uh, fair, but also provides the, the revenues the city needs. So, but and I would also note that even dropping the assessment ratio, that does not necessarily mean that a person's tax bill is gonna be the same as it was last year. Exactly. It so could still be it, higher. it could still be higher based on the value of the car. Absolutely. So, you know, and I want people to understand that, that that's a possibility. It's not going to be a, you know, a flat even. It, it's much like we do with the real estate, right? right. We can only set an, an, a rate and an assessment in the aggregate each individual's own vehicle or, or property uh, will vary. That's right. So um, <coughs> that's a good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. And, and one, one other thing I'd like to uh, make mention on this personal property tax is, hands down, December the 5th is the worst month that we could be collecting these taxes 20 days before Christmas. <coughs> Would this council <coughs> entertain the thought of moving this? We've got June the 5th and December the 5th for real estate. Well, that's what I said. I, I think it would be good. I don't think we could do it now because of the way we budgeted for this year, but I think in general we need to, like I said, there are a whole lot of localities in Virginia. I, you know, when I was running last year, I did a lot of research that, that break up their personal property collection times between June and December, so it doesn't hit all right there at Christmas. <coughs> now, one, uh, just to throw something out there, too, I think the Commissioner of Revenue or the Treasurer, they told me one time, you, know, you don't have to wait until December 5th. That's when the bill is due, the final bit payment is due. But if people wanted to come in, say, once a month for 12 months and make a payment at the beginning of the month, they could come in and bring 25 or 50 bucks. And I thought to myself, oh, I'm gonna do that next year. But then I end up waiting until December 5th, so. Because nobody's excited to voluntarily go down. And I was yeah. gonna say, when yeah. do you pay your house payment? <laughs> yeah. When it's due. Last day, yeah. <laughs> Um, and Ms. Nave, can you hear us okay? You. Yes, yep. um, I just wanted to chime in on this as well. And I agree with um, what Councilman Wingard is saying um, about the percentage. Um, and looking at the 85% versus the 82 or 83%, um, I know we have to be conscious of our budget and look at that, but at the same time, um, with the rising values of the automobiles. Um, I, I mean, personally, I'm concerned and I, I'm worried about what mine are going to look like, um, as well as uh, our citizens. And so in thinking about that and looking at what that discount could be, um, I would be apt to go with the 83% around that area. Just to double check, these bills are sent out sometime in October, I believe. In so October, yes. Okay. Now, I can't. I don't know the exact date, but it is in October, and it may be delayed this year simply because of this assessment ratio. So we're on the clock right now. You're basically. on the clock. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to withdraw my motion if that's acceptable. That's acceptable. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to make a new motion that we amend the ordinance that was presented uh, from a 90% assessment value to an 83% assessment value. And uh, that's my motion. I'll 
second that. So we have a new motion to uh, the second reading of the ordinance and amending it for at a 83% um, rate. Uh, if there's no more further council discussion, uh, clerk, please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? Yes. Barnum? Yes. I'd like to clarify that it was originally by caption only, so that, that was also by caption only. Thank you. Thank God. <laughs> and uh, so now a reading of the ordinance by caption only. I think, Council, the best thing to do instead of reading the caption of the ordinance, because that does not change the budget ordinance, I will just read the uh, section two, which would change, which states. Um, mm -hmm. Valuation for the tax year 2022 of fiscal year 2022-2023 and an assessment ratio of 83% for personal property. Let me reread that. That the rate of taxation on personal property for automobiles, trucks, and horse trailers be fixed at $2.60 on the $100 assessed for the valuation of the tax year 2022 for fiscal year 2022-2023 and an assessment ratio of 83%. All right, thank you. So now we need a motion to adopt the ordinance. Uh, I move for final adoption of the amended ordinance uh, as presented. Second. Okay. All right, a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. Clerk, please call the roll. Harley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? Yes. Farnham? Yes. The next item is a closed session <clears throat> pursuant to section 2.2 hyphen 3711.a1 code of virginia 1950 as amended discussion consideration or interviews of prospective candidates for employment assignment appointment promotion performance demotion salaries <clears throat> disciplining or resignation of specific public officers appointees or employees of any public body personnel we're now looking for a motion to go into closed session. I move that we enter into closed session for the reasons stated. Second. A motion and a second. Clerk, please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? Yes. Farnham? Yes. All right. Uh, by roll call vote, council members certify that only business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements as specified in the motion to convene in executive session were discussed. Clerk, please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Nave? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? Yes. Farnham? Yes. Uh, Council, tonight I'd like to make a recommendation to you as who will be the city's next chief financial officer. I'm recommending Ms. Janet Jennings. She currently serves as the finance director, treasurer, and city recorder in the city of Johnson City and her first day would be on October the 3rd of 2022. Mm -hmm. I move that we accept the city manager's recommendation for the hiring of a chief financial officer. Second. Okay, a motion and a second to accept the city manager's recommendation. Is there any council discussion? Uh, this, is, this is a very impressive hire and, uh, and I think we will be fortunate to, to have her. Um, we all appreciate Miss Bradland's work and, and the effort and dedication she put in, and you know every uh, every CFO is going to be different, and so this is going to be a different person. But I think she's going to do a great job. I look forward to working with her. Okay. If there's no further discussion, clerk, please call the roll. Hartley. Yes. Nave. Yes. Osborne. Yes. Wingard. Yes. Farnham. Yes. <clears throat> That's the last item of our agenda. If there's no further business, we stand adjourned. Thank you.